Good evening, everyone. Hello, hello. Welcome to Power Hour. It's Monica again, and I have a great privilege tonight to welcome my lovely colleague, Fatima Parker, who not only is a brilliant physiotherapist, but she's also a fantastic NLP uh, practitioner. And uh, today, although we could talk probably physiotherapy for hours. Today, we're going to be talking and grilling Fatima on everything NLP. <laughs> Hi, Fatima. Thank you for joining me tonight. Yeah, thank you for having me here on the cover. Oh, I have about 120 questions for you, so uh, <laughs> we should probably start going. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think for a lot of people listening to us right now, the very first question would be, what is NLP? <laughs> Okay, um, I think I just want to simplify that down, okay? So, um, say, Monica, you want to achieve a goal. What would be your first m mindset? Say maybe a simple goal like a weight loss goal. Mm -hmm. what, what would be your first strategy and process you would think about towards that towards that weight loss? Uh, probably it, hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hard, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah maybe stuck. You know, yeah, some something something along the side of that because I imagine if you know if that was my goal when I wasn't able to achieve it, there was obviously something that I'm dealing with. So yeah, that's yeah. So if you kind of notice here, every time you want to achieve something, a goal or so. So goal is just one part of it, right? We have certain psychological strategies to to a to goal or to something we want to achieve, and there are certain patterns. Like you said, that you have this goal of say weight loss. So your first thought process would be, um, it's hard, um, mm. or and the second one you said that would be, uh, can I achieve it? So these are all our, what we call as these are all our thought processes and our limiting beliefs. So what mm. helps to do is address these limiting beliefs of ours, like it's hard, you know, it is. Um, Will I be able to achieve it? These are all certain. This is something we we, we individuals experience every single day. And NLP is what helps to change this thought process to a positive thought process because this is what's going on in our in our subconscious mind. And this thought process can be as a result of our experiences in the past. Okay, so say in the past you might have found exams really tough, or you might mm. have you know found you know something in life very tough or and that has made you think that it'll be hard mm. achieving that goal can be hard or achieving you, you kind of doubt that you can achieve it mm. or you're it really hard to it because that's that's a pattern you've had from your past experiences so what NLP needs to do is understand these set patterns from our past and it helps you change them in a positive light Mm. It gives you a solution to address this. So say something like something as simple as, as um, I wouldn't say simple, but something as weight loss, right? Mm -hmm. It has a lot of emotional, um, it has a lot of emotional baggage attached to it as well, which very few times individuals are able to understand or address. Mm. And um, I must say very similarly, as a physio, I see this even in my clinic a lot. So mm. say a client is coming with a backache or, you know, pain in the ankle. But there is always a lot of stress and anxiety, which has been built up by certain kinds of fear. Mm. The NLP really appealed to me was because it was a very holistic approach. It's mm. something I could help my clients understand that besides their backache, besides the pain in the ankle, you are suffering from stress and anxiety, which equally needs to be addressed to reduce this pain. If you notice when you're stressed or you are really anxious about something or you're going through a pain time, your backache, your ankle pain will feel a lot more painful on the pain scale as compared mm -hmm. to what it actually is. And that is not only the result of our thought process. Why do we get stressed and anxious? It's because it's we get usually experiences because of a certain kind of fear pattern or disbelief pattern we have within ourselves that creates the fear of fear and anxiety. And what NLP does is it helps you address this and helps you understand these patterns and helps you understand your vision. So your end goal vision 
to, 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 to reduce weight. So what can you do? What, you first need to unlearn these patterns which you have in your subconscious mind to achieve that goal. Yes, you can go for personal training, you can go for nutrition, but what about the emotional aspect of it? It mm. is equally important. And this is what it is. This is what NLP is. It helps you understand your limiting beliefs, your certain thinking patterns, which have an impact on on your everyday life, you know. So you can get up. If a lot of individuals get up every morning with a very negative thought process, which is something to do with their past. Okay. So um, a certain past experiences and they get up with that exactly that negative thought pattern or remembering those past experiences. But mm. it's going to help you understand this thought process that you're going through every single day. A lot of us end up living in our past, but NLP helps you understand the power of now and what you can do to address these patterns and come out of it and you break through in life. So just it's really, yeah. yeah, it's really interesting because I think it's it's a very important, we'll probably touch in a second on all various things that NLP can uh, help you with, which I assume is just endless list of different problems. But I think a weight loss one is a really interesting one because firstly, it resonates with a lot of people. All of us at some point struggled with our weight. And I think there's always been some sort of hurdles that we had to overcome, some people more successfully than the others. Um, and me as a trainer, you know, I I see a lot of people that come to myself directly, you know, expecting miracles, expecting the um, weight loss to kind of happen. Um, whilst really all it is, is that they have all that underlying trauma, stresses um, and problems in the past and in their private life where I could, you know, you know, make them do endless exercises, but realistically, all those endless exercises will not really be able to help them because there's still all those blockages that have been there for years, if not decades. So, you know, how many times, I can't even tell you how many times I've seen clients that, you know, have been with me for months and they've been doing the right things from the, you know, physical standpoint. They were even under nutritionist supervision. So they knew all the stuff that helped them lose weight, helped them lose weight through dieting, through uh, exercising. And yet there were so many other factors that they themselves weren't able to confront yet, let alone, you know, overcome. So what's really interesting that I always, you know, I used to have that saying with my colleagues who were also trainers. We used to be like, you know, are we trainers or are we therapists? Because actually people, trainers that used to be way more in tune with people's habits were much more successful at making people lose weight. So we may have had all the knowledge in terms of the physical side of things. And yet only the ones that knew how to really help people change their habits and their behavioral um, problems were the ones that were able to achieve any results. But I think is it fair to say that you're able to get make someone lose weight without even going to the gym? <laughs> <laughs> well, to a certain extent, yes, because it is going to change their patterns. So if you kind of see um, when we have an emotional trigger or you're stressed, at least for myself, the first thing I want to reach out to is something sweet, mm. chocolate, or I need... Um, I need something really fatty to go down. Mm. I feel really good. <laughs> Don't make me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> but that is my emotional trigger, you know, like, um, and I think that um, that is what, um, that's, I, I myself suffered from, you know, weight issues while I was in uni quite extensively. Mm. And I had to understand my own patterns and my own emotional triggers as to why this is. And I think eventually when I started getting into NLP, I eventually realized that um, a lot of this is because of um, setbacks in the I had as a child, certain mm -hmm. beliefs that I had formed about myself as a child, which I had to undo to, um, to really address that issue. So, and of course for me, it was, um, so even like exercising plays a very important part, but how many people are actually able to stick to that goal of exercising? 
is mm. a luxury. And, and also, I think it plays an important part in keeping you determined or, you know, keeping you really focused on that higher vision of wanting to reduce weight. And hence, exercise plays an important part of that as well, along with the emotional part. And it keeps you focused and keeps you going to be able to achieve that. Because there comes a point where people think, oh, it's not working, you know, and let's just give it up. Or, you know, forget it, I've had a number of sessions, nothing seems to be working, I'll try nutrition. But then again, that sees um, a certain pattern about themselves that they're giving up and probably they have they have given up about a few things about themselves in the past as well. Mm. I mean, we all, at, we all live a life where we kind of feel empty, lonely. You know, we don't, we all don't understand sometimes uh, what is our main purpose or in life, which can sometimes cause a lot of anxiety and stress. Mm. But we, I think what, what we need to address and understand is why this feeling of emptiness, why this feeling of loneliness, you know, why do we need to have um, have to need, say, a life partner to feel happy in life? Sure. Because happiness is something that stems from within. Nobody can make us happy, really. Yeah. How do we do happy? Mm. It's about it's, it's a process of learning for ourselves. Mm. So it is a journey that's going to take us to that end goal. And in that journey, you'd learn to undo certain patterns and thought processes that's going to help you achieve that final goal of yours. And that works similarly for weight loss, for phobias. We have certain phobias, say, you know, people have phobias on going on airplanes, they have phobias, mm. you know, certain different kind of phobias, car driving, we can hear recently yeah. addressed. And these are all the result of certain um, issues we have, uh, or certain, um, certain experiences from our past, really. Mm. You formed a, a set set thought process. Mm -hmm. So, somebody who is really scared of a spider, if you kind of um, ask them, why would the spider look to you like? And they will say that, you know, probably that that spider feels like it's covered up the whole room. And that makes them feel too scared. But the reason mm. why that happens is that's all they can see in the room. Mm. And then it's really important to understand that you have certain experiences as a childhood which has you know made them go into that process of having a creating that fear and mm. anxious anxiety and stress as a result of that so i think it's for everyone who listens to us it's probably really interesting to know um we talk about phobias we talk about um weight loss i imagine a lot of uh, people who are listening due to the nature of our clinics would probably look into say chronic pain and those cycles that people get themselves into and we know obviously the strong link between the emotional and the physical uh, and the mental and the physical side of our well-being um do you ever find with your clients and i guess it's more also from the physiotherapy side you know you see a lot of patients and you have a great success with so many clients do you, would you ever put it down to also understanding that side and looking at a patient just beyond, you know, their lower back pain that's been with them for 10 years? Um, has that ever, how do I say, has that ever connected to your physiotherapy um, or do you keep it fully separately? No, massively. So one reason why I really wanted to do NLP was because I saw the patterns in my patients where I felt, wow, they have so much anxiety, there's so much stress, which is, you know, causing their pain to get a little bit worse, or, you know, they have a higher perseverance of their pain. Um, mm -hmm. And it always made me wonder what I could do about it. And um, then I got introduced to NLP and life coaching, and I was like, this is it, this is what I need to do. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I use it a lot in my clinic to, you know, address because um, when when you're having certain thought processes or you're having certain kind of limiting beliefs about yourself, you are going to feel your shoulder pain a lot more. You are going mm. to feel like, oh, I just can't play tennis ever again because of that shoulder pain. But mm. when that has changed and you are showing your own vision of playing, being able to play tennis again, you are going to be more about the treatment you're receiving towards your shoulder. 
Mm. And to make it easier for me as a you as well to help you achieve that goal because I've helped to change your thought process. So um, yeah, I, I do use it widely in my clinic, especially since I'm, uh, I've trained in NLP. Uh, it's something I'm being, trying to use it every day with my patients. And it has it has its positive impact. Another part of my clinic, which I do, is the vestibular physiotherapy. Mm -hmm. So in vestibular physiotherapy, I usually get patients who are suffering from a lot of dizziness. And sometimes the dizziness can be a sudden onset. But a huge part of the means of the sudden onset is even because of um, stress, anxieties that they have been experiencing, say, in personal life, or because of huge losses in life, be it in business, be it personal. And, uh, you, say, you know, yeah, it was been a tough time that I felt this dizziness come on, or I felt this massive vertigo come on. Mm. And I think um, MLP has given me a stronger edge. As a vestibular because we can help them address this issue, uh -huh. which, uh, which I'm quite happy because initially I used to feel a bit lost. I used to think, should I be sending them to a psychologist? What should I be doing? Uh -huh. But then sometimes they said that you know they didn't get a real solution, and then I found that really NLP has a solution to the thought processes, uh -huh. and um, that's why I found it so so powerful, really. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I think, yeah, sorry. yeah, I think what is really important, and I think I want to, um, I'm going to spill the beans that obviously I have had a chance to try it uh, with yourself uh, to fully understand the benefits of it. You know, the part of us launching new services is to also make everyone around us to understand really what the benefits are. And the first thing that I really felt um after the session was a huge feeling of uplifting and kind of a sense of just lightness to it, which I think is very crucial for anyone who listens to us right now and wonders maybe how does NLP compare to, you know, CBT or any other therapies that are out there. Um, and then one thing from a person that tried both, <laughs> I would want to say that it leaves you on a positive, more action-based more in control note rather than therapy therapy offers you solutions you know it opens your mind and obviously if you have that strength and willingness to work through it you're definitely going to benefit from but NLP almost felt like a complete process so as opposite to kind of being left to make those choices I almost felt like I already made that choice by the time I even finished that session which was which was a different sense of empowering and kind of more more positive of an experience. I, I kind of felt similar thing. I accessed similar areas to conventional therapy, but it didn't feel like after accessing it, I was left alone with it. You know, it felt like I've processed it on top of accessing it, um, which was a really huge difference um to the conventional therapy so yeah. for anyone wondering what the difference was from the <laughs> client's mm -hmm. perspective um i don't know if that's the same for the original definition whether whether there are some uh, official differences that that you might want to present but from a client's perspective that's exactly how it felt yeah that's exactly how i felt as well and um I have kind of moved forward as well and um with uh, usually with CPT I felt I felt very sorry for myself and I mm. felt like I'm left I'm a victim of my past and mm. I felt you know okay um but why should I be a victim of my past was a solution to this I want a solution mm. and that hunger for solution is what I got from NLP mm. <laughs> is what I'll say I felt more in control. I felt in control. I felt that I'm in control of my emotions, how I react to certain adversities that come in my life, and mm. I felt in control of understanding my patterns, certain patterns. So we all have certain patterns which help us attract certain people in our life. So uh, when I was in the victim pattern, I think I, I attracted very probably I would say very wrong relationships. Mm -hmm. But I did these patterns, and um, on a more positive note, now I have more self-belief, and I know what kind of people I should be attracting. 
And mm-hmm. this is what it helps you do. It helps you understand your pattern with thought processes and makes you more in control. So no mm. matter what adversity in future or in current time you'll be struck with, because adversities are something we can't avoid, right? Mm. We are going to feel some, some setback every single day or, you know, a month or every day in our life. Yeah. But it's how we react to them and how our mindset is tuned to them that we are able to um, make something out of it. And that can be either we live sadly about that adversity, that, oh, why did this have to happen, which is the victim mindset, or we see the positive and we move ahead from that. And another interesting question, um, could, is, uh, is NLP only beneficial if you do it one-on-one or is it beneficial in a more gr- of a group scenario? So say, I imagine a lot of people wonder, you know, if they could join as a family, if they can join as a group of co-workers, because, um, you know, it, it is touching on a lot of things that people struggle with, but also it, it brings a lot of positive changes. So I imagine that, of course, it will be great to have it on a one-to-one basis because you can really personalize that. But is there, are there benefits to NLP for larger people, or larger groups of people? So la- larger, say, settings or even 5, 10, 20 people, if you wish. Yeah, so it can it can be for a large group as well. Um, so we can do it for, you know, a good corporate sector who want to increase um you know, to increase things like rapport between the team workers who want to increase self-confidence and self-worth and understand self-value. Um, yeah, so this can be done as a group uh, and address those issues. We can even do it for um, children who are suffering from social anxiety and help their parents and them understand how NLP can help with that and help mm-hmm. them with and anxiety so this is um, you know it can be anxiety towards exams it can be uh, towards peer pressure but yeah we can do it for them as a family so yeah it's all about um, you know you can do it on an individual basis because sometimes people are just you know embarrassed to speak about certain certain, mm. certain topics which they're experiencing in life so, so I hope that I'm not going to put you on the spot in here but would it be possible to show our viewers um, a little snippet of how the um, NLP could help them with weight loss? So I imagine a lot of people tuning us. I'm trying to I'm trying to go into a little bit of a kind of common ground area where I feel like a lot of us could resonate with the weight loss subject. Um, so if I was to ask you to show us a little bit of NLP, <laughs> a little bit of that magic um, to allow people to have a, a taster of what NLP is and how does that make them feel, would you be open to that? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Definitely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So. Okay, Monica, so you want to lose weight? I do. I do, okay. So what does is, what is weight loss look to you like, Monica? Uh, weight loss, on a simplistic level, I think just happiness, just um, the first thing that comes to my head generally is, is summer. Summer. Okay. So I don't. I don't know why. Maybe because of the correlation with the beach and you know bikini, and I just probably pictured myself in that biki- bikini. Bikini. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so I see the beach. I see the summer. Um, yeah, just a nice. And what does that summer look like? Uh, I think yeah, it's a warm day on the beach. Uh, I'm playing volleyball. I think I'm just going to my childhood now. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm playing volleyball on the beach. Um, I'm with my friends. And yeah, we're having a good time. It's a nice summery day. You can hear the sea. Mm. And um, nice summery day, you're playing volleyball and it brings happiness. And what does that stomach look like? Is it a big tummy? Is it a flat tummy? I can't see myself. I can see others, which is quite interesting. So. Mm 
I see I see my friends who all look very good. And I wonder what myself. very good look like to you. Uh, just just slim, not not too you know, not too thin, just the right <laughs> just the right level of kind of slim, slight muscle definition kind of nothing nothing over the top in either direction. Um, yeah. Okay. And once you have kind of achieved this slim, slight muscle definition, you're playing in that warm beach, that you know, volleyball, everyone's really happy. What what will what will that make you feel like? What will it bring for you? Um, I feel light. I don't know if that makes sense. I feel light. I feel like everything's just easy. Okay, you feel light and easy. And what do you feel light and easy feel like within your body? Uh, it actually thinks like a flat stomach, feels like a flat stomach. <laughs> like a flat stomach, okay. Yeah. Okay, so feeling light and easy feels like a flat stomach to you. Brilliant. And what is um, having that flat stomach make you feel within yourself? How does it make you feel within yourself? Um. It makes me feel more open, I think. Okay, more open. Um, I think I'm, I think more willing to enjoy various different activities without worrying what I look like. Um, so just, just less, maybe a little bit carefree. Okay. So it makes you um, makes you feel more open. You you feel like you're enjoying your activities a lot more. You feel more open. And what else? What else does it make you feel like? What, um, what, how does it make you feel you? with your friends next to you? Um, equal, I think. So I don't see. I don't. I don't feel like um, I'm comparing myself to them. Oh, you're not comparing yourself to them. Okay. And how does Monica feel when she compares herself to them? Very critical, I think. I don't think Monica doesn't like herself. I just think that there's always something that she feels there can be an improvement. Um, so I don't feel less um, attractive. I think just always overly critical with the things that probably don't matter, but somehow they matter to me. <laughs> and how does this overcritical feeling make you feel within yourself? Um, sometimes a little silly okay. in the sense that I feel like um, there are more important things in life. Um, but sometimes it actually affects how I am able to enjoy myself in a group of people. Okay. okay. And when it affects how you are able to enjoy yourself within a group of people, what happens within yourself, Monica? Um, I don't think I'm as present, so I would probably think about it quite um quite too too much <laughs> so maybe i miss some conversations maybe i miss some jokes i feel like um yeah i would be definitely more likely to to almost not be as present as i would like it to be okay okay all right and um we're gonna do a little um a little meditation at this point okay where i want you to Close your eyes, okay? I want to imagine you imagine yourself on a sunny beach where you are playing a volleyball and you're having a sense of happiness. It is a nice, summery, warm day. You are having a little tummy with slight emotion, feeling very, very comfortable with your friends. 
I want you to make this image bigger of Monica. So big of this happy Monica who's got a nice slim tummy with slight definition. She's on the beach with her friends and she's feeling open and she's really enjoying herself. I want you to make that bigger. And I want you to start playing volleyball and keep making that image bigger. And I want you to continue feeling that feeling. I want you to first feel that warmness in the beach. You're just playing your volleyball without feeling, without even having to compare yourself to anyone out there. You are feeling open about it. You have let go of the feeling of critical, that critical feeling that you have for yourself. You're open, present, you're really enjoying the game. Once again, I want to make that image even bigger with Monica, who is really enjoying herself on that nice summer day playing volleyball with her friends. I want you to make it bigger and bigger. That is you, Monica. That's the real you. Everybody else is you. We have gone really cool now. Don't matter. This is you in the present right now, Monica. This slim, this stomach. You don't have to be critical of yourself. You're open, you're present, you're enjoying life. You've taken that weight off you completely of critical about yourself. You're feeling light, you're feeling happy, and you're just enjoying the company around you. I want you to slowly open your eyes now. <laughs> wow. Uh, just uh, actually really tuned out other people which <laughs> is crazy <laughs> ah, wow yeah um, very very unimportant in the sense of what others look like or what others are if that makes sense I kind of almost had to remind myself what my first picture was um, because I ended up just with myself in it and uh, I kind of had to take a moment to to figure out what was the first one I saw and and then I kind of I just didn't feel as um, as excited about that first one in a sense that it was like okay yeah it was that but, but I don't um, want to go there. <laughs> yeah very uh, very interesting <laughs> so you can do a similar thing say you know during checkouts we see a lot of chocolate bars there yeah so usually what we do with nlp is try and make this image really big for the clients while yeah. they're at the checkout point and um, that prevents them from reaching out to that chocolate or that bag of crisps mm. yeah it's it's extremely powerful it's i guess um, I don't know whether that goes for, uh, I know that there's plenty of people that uh, react to various different senses, but for me as a very visual person, that was very powerful because it just tuned out. Firstly, it just took me there, but also it completely tuned out other people, which which I feel like to start with was my problem. And now it's just like, who was in that photo? <laughs> um, yeah. it's, it's very... Um, it's very interesting how such little thing can just really change outlook on on, the, on everything. Really, I guess I imagine is just managed to do it like that in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally, yeah. It really changes your outlook. That's that's from my own personal experience. Mm. And um, Fatima, how how often do those results last? Because I guess the one thing that people will want to know whilst you 
whilst you have what's called a breakthrough, um, hmm. are, those, are these breakthroughs for life or do they kind of, are we at risk of bringing them back uh, if we don't continue doing the work? No, so once you've achieved a big breakthrough, that's usually for life because you have understood your pattern. So we have worked through your patterns. So this was just a very quick discovery what I would do with somebody. This I have not even touched many other circuses. We have yeah. not even touched. <laughs> <laughs> so, so well, once, once you've achieved the breakthrough, usually the breakthrough stays through. Yeah, mm -hmm. they've understood their pattern and they've come out of that pattern, that set pattern of mindset. Mm -hmm. But um, sometimes, like say with those, we need to kind of understand what has happened in their past. We need to understand their thinking pattern as a result of that, what causes the emotional triggers for them to go and eat constantly, or, you know, their feeling of low self-esteem that makes them, um, feel, you know, want to grab onto food constantly. They get that mm -hmm. comfort from eating that food. And why is that? So we need to address those issues. What is their empty spot in life? What are they feeling really empty about that they feel like they need to fill it up with food? So these are certain things we will be addressing in, you know, much greater lengths. And hence, sometimes we need, you know, the eight sessions of the 10 sessions, which last for an hour. Um, but sometimes with certain clients, um, you know, they achieve a breakthrough, say, in two days or maybe even on the same day. Mm. So it depends a lot when a client's thought process and how they feel at the end of it, really. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, and maybe a little bit of a tricky question. I don't know if it's that straightforward to answer. Is there any person who isn't suitable for NLP? So, yeah, there are certain. So, firstly, I would like to say that NLP doesn't help to diagnose any psychological issues. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. It makes you understand your, uh, it may help to understand your psychological pattern your the strategies you apply when you're trying to when you are confronted with certain issues in life and how what these patterns are and how you can undo these patterns in a much more positive way okay so if somebody is going to come to me with the adhd say and they want to get rid of adhd not really i can uh, what i can do possibly is uh, help them understand their anxiety patterns about ADHD and I can help them address those patterns which is not a cure for any psychological illness um, and that's really important to understand that uh, about NLP. Hmm. And yeah, and I imagine, imagine there's just a lot of things you can although there are limitations obviously to the diagnosis or to, to psychological um, uh, disorders but is it fair to say that to a certain degree it can help anyone? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. If somebody comes in with depression as well, it's really important to understand what are the underlying factors causing this depression? What are the underlying fears? What are the underlying, you know, fears which are causing the stress and anxiety which is leading to the depression? Mm. Do they understand that, you know, um, what happened is really is and how to find that happiness within themselves we need to understand these patterns we need to understand you know this whole circle of life that they they had that they have mapped out in their mind so mind mapping is a very important part of this to understand you know what where they are and what are what is the language they're using for themselves every single day so uh, you know people would say that oh, I'm not, I'm not good enough, you know, who, who wants to listen to me? But is this all really true? Is this all really true that nobody wants to listen to you? And does it even really matter? So these, mm -hmm. are, these are the language that we use subconsciously every single day, but we don't understand that as individuals. Mm -hmm. And NLP that helps to understand this mind mapping, this, this language process that we use for ourselves, and it helps you undo that. And that is a very important part of all of this. So I can do something yes. like that. But then again, if that person is going to go into, you know, a sad state and think, oh, I'm not good enough, though, you know, um, you know, I don't really have a flat belly, though, you know. But what is your thought process between us behind all of this? Mm. Why do you think you're not good enough? So we need to kind of 
go on deeper and understand those those underlying issues basically mm. really um really really powerful stuff i think uh if if i may suggest to anyone listening to us who has been struggled with pretty much anything or I don't even want to always sound negative in terms of a struggle. Struggle is such a big word. But if you had a pattern that is hard to break, which I think, I think it's very fair to say we all have, but obviously it affects your life in a way that it stops you from achieving that next level, whether that's personally, professionally, or just stops you from feeling free and happy. Um, go and try it. <laughs> it's you. really... If, you, if it's not for you, it's not for you. But I am nearly certain that once you try it and you feel that effect and that simplicity about changing it, um, and most importantly, the fact that although obviously you're the one given the tools, it's not yourself who's changing it, it's the person. Um, you realize that these are the changes for life. And if we only have that one life, at least that's what we know. Um, why spending it, you know, not feeling great and not feeling happy and fully fulfilled. Um, and I think it's in the current times where a lot of feelings have been brought up to the surface and a lot more people feel things that whether they didn't before, didn't have time to feel before. Um, it is all more important that we look after ourselves and we really come out of this situation, which still no one really knows where where or when is going to end. Yeah. And happier within ourselves, because as we have a proof of 2020, there's very little in our control <laughs> in the outside world. Um, so look after yourselves. And and if there is anything that needs addressing or anything that will help you feel more free and happy, just do it. Absolutely, I definitely agree with that. These are times when we don't have control. And sometimes when we feel that we don't have control, there come stress, anxiety. And it's about really understanding all of this and empowering yourself really. And that's what NLP does. really helps you empower your, yourself. It helps you understand that you have resources within yourself to solve any problem that comes in your life. It can be well, in terms of really simple things, like I'll tell you, like, I have this issue where I find it difficult to focus, right? Um, I love doing things, I love doing things, right? So I will put my targets here. I'll, do, I'll finish writing a book, I'll finish making my posture braids. I want to, you know, make my next weighted blankets for hypermobility. I have all these goals. But what I struggle a lot with is focus and um, performance. So uh, NLP then helps me higher vision and helps me focus towards that. So mm. it's a very positive light as well. And I had to um, I had to use a lot of um, life coaches to help me understand my issue with focus, which was um, you know which which can actually cause a lot of setback in life because when you're not achieving your goals and it makes you feel like a failure and doesn't make you feel good enough, it sets you into that pattern. So for me, I was like, I don't have to achieve this. I want to do it. But why is my focus not there? Why do I back off towards the end? Why do I not complete things? Mm. And NLP helped me understand these patterns. It's really, um, it's a really powerful uh, way to wrap it up, I think. Yeah. It's a really powerful way to sum it up, most importantly, um, because this is what I want all of us to to get out of it, is that uh, it is within the powers of ourselves, um, but it's not always so straightforward to get there yourselves. So if you can, that's brilliant. You probably should take both of our jobs. <laughs> if you can't or if you feel stuck, there is help out there. And although you're going to be ultimately the person helping yourself, we give you the tools and help you get there. Yeah. Um, and it's, uh, it's really incredible. I really want to thank you um, for, for joining me today. I hope that this is not the last of uh, really interesting talks that we have because it's 
hope that anyone who may have struggled um, with knowing where to go for help has the answer now. Um, and I hope there will be many, many more people that will have a success stories um, from NLP. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Let's hope so. <laughs> If you um, if you have any questions, please leave them in a the comment section below where I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Um, or if you want to find out a little bit more about NLP, please don't hesitate to contact us and go to our website at perfectbalanceclinic.com where you can find uh, not only our lovely Fatima, but a contact details to reach out to us and find out even more and book a consultation with Fatima. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Monica. It was really, really enjoyed that. Thank you very much. Thank you.